Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're uh, getting ready here to head into the, the finals of the uh, the Geico tournament. Uh, just if you guys are just tuning in here, just up to you guys what's going on. Uh, we started with eight players. Uh, we went down to, to four, uh, and now we're down to two. And those two players are Forsen and Kibler. They've been playing the uh, Geico Brawl rules, which today are actually right below us there. You guys can see those. And uh, uh, a little bit of details. Some of you guys may just be tuning in now. Uh, all cards and all the decks of all the players uh, have had to follow the, uh, the first rule, which is uh, you need uh, two instances of factors of 15 on every card in your deck. So um, the factors of 15, 1, 3, 5, and 15. Uh, they have to be shown on the card in one instance on the attack, on the health, on the description, or the mana cost. So, Vile Feature would be like a, a three attack, that counts, five health, that counts, spawns a 1-1 one, one in the description, that counts. That's three instances. You only need two. And this has some interesting repercussions, which we'll see as the decks get uh, revealed here. And, of course, all decks must include Nas Dormu. Failure to uh, complete the, the tasks here. Uh, the first penalty is the Magma Rager. We've seen quite a few Magma Ragers in the tournament, but not much else from the penalty list, from what I recall. Yep, Forsen still has a pair of Magma Ragers lurking in one of those decks. Uh, I forget which one it was, but hopefully those don't pop up for him. Uh, yeah. it looks like he added the Paladin deck like we expected, and Kibler right. actually added Warlock, which I have to think. That. I have to think that's going to be. Nothing like life coaches, right? Like it's gonna have taunts, it's gonna have healing, it's gonna have mm. early game. Like you just need early game. You need zombie chaz. You need all the stuff to survive. Or maybe he just goes zoo and just tries to fight fire with fire. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the aggressive creatures are just more efficient than the defensive creatures. Um, like taunt is worth like a death rattle, basically. So. I think generally you want the annoying zoo creatures even in a defensive deck most of the time. You just kind of include a few of those extra defensive tools to maybe make it work. But uh, we will see. The players are ready. Uh, the players, again, are playing Conquest. Normally, we've been doing best of five. Players had to submit three decks, had to construct all three decks in 15 minutes. But the fourth deck, the ones that we just talked about, this is only for the final round. The players had... Uh, they had a day to think about it, but I think they just had a few minutes to uh, submit the deck just before the finals here. If you missed it, Forsen uh, did pretty well yesterday by just uh, uh, zerging the crap out of his opponents with his aggression. Seemed to work out pretty well. Yep. He was just basically, I mean, he ran over uh, Ratsma just in three games flat, beat a Warlock deck, and he had a closer series against Savits. But at the end of the day, the aggression seemed to be the king of mm -hmm. yesterday and of today it's kind of been the opposite story i mean firebat won with some aggro but kibler put him down 3-1 pretty quick and made it here with some slower decks yeah well uh looks like we have a paladin mirror this is the the deck that forsen just added so it's probably a pretty uh a pretty well built deck and most of the decks so far have had uh, how should I say? Maybe, maybe like a kink or two. A few things that didn't go quite as planned because it's hard to plan things perfectly in the allowed time. Um, so here he drops the Knife Juggler. I don't really see why it's a risky play at all. It's not like you're going to run up against a Shielded Minibot or anything. Yeah, the only thing that really would counter it would be a uh, just a coin cog hammer. Mm -hmm. But I like it. It was an ambitious play. It was the most aggressive one you can take. Follows along with what forsen has been doing. And he got rewarded for it, so he's going to yeah, be ahead on board early. All right, well, to follow here, um, I mean, you have to... Do you have to kill every creature? Yeah, you probably have to kill every creature. <laughs> well, I was just kind of thinking about that. It's like, you get a pretty nice trade here. But at the same yeah. time, you could just go face. Yeah. There's no, there's no consecration. You know, the only thing that really punishes you if you go too far in is mind control tech, which we see in uh, Forsen's hand right now. But, yeah, I mean, he, you can be safe, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, wa I wonder why he went for the juggle then before attacking. Maybe he tried to save the, the weapon charge and the damage mm -hmm. to face. It's, it's good that he did trade because the muster for battle is the one card that would punish him. Uh, right. With the line that he took. Well... 
Uh, here you can peacekeep the Twilight Drake, making it pretty useless as uh, most buffs are not allowed. Um, actually, Blessing of Might is allowed, but we haven't seen that from a single Paladin deck, have we? Yeah, what do you think about trading in those Haunted Creepers? Just getting the extra 1-1s, one getting the extra power on board. Ha what, well, what punish is it? <laughs> explosive Sheep. Yeah, but you, your opponent can't trigger the Explosive Sheep. Uh, Elven Archer. That doesn't punish. That only kills one of them. I, I think you, you get those juggles. You juggle get it the up. Juggles. All right. Maybe even Cog Hammer just to. Uh, you can. Mm. Well, nah. You probably that didn't seem play so that good. Uh, I guess you play. There's some chances Twilight Drake dies to the juggles here. Yeah. He gets, that chance like, is gone. He gets like six juggles. No, he still gets like no. four it's more gone. juggles. It can still die. Oh, right, to the creature that he plays. Yeah. I mean, he's going face, right? Like, no matter what. Okay, missed. That's unfortunate. All right. Well, yeah, there's a lot of juggling in the face, at least. I like this play. Like, you're just putting a lot of power on the board. Mm -hmm. It's really tough for Kibler to find a way to make this bad for Forza. Right, right. It seems like Monster would be what you want to play, but if you play Monster, you can't play anything with it, and you have so many five drops in hand, it feels kind of sad. So perhaps the play is actually Emperor, but then how do you win? Yeah, I think you... There's basically three options. There's Muster, Blackwing, and Emperor. Emperor seems... Big green. Yeah, yeah, I mean, your opponent's probably going to ignore it in some way, like with either this Aldor or Coghammer, stuff like that. And then, you know, you make three threes next turn, but you're taking, what, like seven damage? So you're just dead. Uh, if you go for Muster, I mean, it's kind of the same story. You get to make a bunch of 3 threes next turn, but doesn't matter. He actually traded Greedy. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Those are not Silverhand recruits. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he only would have had that one. Uh, so that was a pretty interesting play there from Kibler. Uh, yeah. Just trying not to lose to that Quartermaster draw because uh, he's shown he's shown the tournament how effective it is more than anyone. And he doesn't want to be punished by that, which seems like a like a fair play. Yeah, I think uh, I think mind control tech was better than hero power there. I mean, it's a three three, and if you quartermaster the silver hand recruit, it's a three three. This is kind of a more hidden lethal, like Forza mm -hmm. technically has lethal, but his opponent doesn't know, or does he? Let's see. That's. Yeah, he has it's three, four, he seven, has exact. nine. Yep, and he's at nine. That is exactly lethal. So yeah, this is more concealed, I suppose. But I still would have liked to just you know, it wouldn't like have mattered. Sneaky. I like the sneakiness. Okay, okay. I, I guess the sneakiness is nice because your opponent's less likely to play something like a heal bot. Mm -hmm. Um, so it worked out well for him. Yes, it did, and uh, Forsen takes the opening game, um, though with the deck that he just added, so um, I think you just have to give credit that it is most likely their best deck. Paladin has probably posted the highest win percentage of this tournament. You, The only real stuff you lose is your 4-drop slot. Uh, you lose you know, the ability to play Kings, True Silver, yeah. Consecrate, but it's such an effective deck at getting ahead on board early with stuff like the muster for battle but and it also retains like some of its more power plays on turn five you get to keep Tyrion for the late game so it's done really well it's no surprise to see it win uh kibler kibler's lost a mirror match so it's not like you know it dropped the ball or anything right we haven't seen uh too many Tyrions out though i'm actually not convinced that it isn't every deck i think a lot of the paladins mostly focus on the early to mid range um I think the Tyrion is a non-factor in most games, but maybe after the game we saw just a short while ago, people might reconsider. But it doesn't matter, because the only person that had the chance to reconsider was Forsten, and he just took yeah. a win with that Paladin deck. Yep. And that Magma Rager. Well, it's going to get pitched away, so like you said the other day, it's, it's probably the place you want to see it, I guess, is in the mulligan. <laughs> you know you yep. can't redraw it. You get the other one, though. There is, in fact, two in this deck. Yep. We know that for a fact. Uh, the Voidwalker and the Leper Gnome, pretty decent. The Doom Guards have been very kind to Forsen. In fact, that's why he's here at all. Um, yep. Looks like he wants to pitch that, though. 
picks up a much worse card there with Nas Dormu. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is Nas Dormu really better than uh, than Magma Rager? I, I feel like it really just isn't. Yeah. They're about the same. It's true. Well, I feel against Kibler, the uh, Nas Dormu isn't too bad. Just because with the way that his decks are designed, you're very likely to make it to a stage where you can play Nas Dormu. And if you're in a marginal situation, you can win. Yeah, I mean, Nas Dormu has denied two onboard lethals this tournament. <laughs> Just because the players are so frantic to not get roped out. Yeah. All right, so you do the trade there. Uh, yeah. Be a bit less vulnerable to a muster. Yep. So now Forsen really needs to pick up something, or else he's going to fall really far behind. Uh, that, is he? he has, uh, Kilgore has absolutely nothing next turn. Yeah, I mean, the, the other side of the table, he needs to pick up something too. And there's not many four drops in the deck, but a three drop. That's a big something. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a three drop that acts as good as most four drops. Yep. So I would say Killer's, you know, doing pretty well for himself here. You, you talked about Tyrion being a non factor, but I feel like it'll really just seal up this game. Like Yeah. When a game's pretty close, Tyrion's probably the best card to play on eight. Especially when your opponents can't play silence. But you think about Argus here, attack into the three five and Argus. He basically challenged the board in an even state. Ooh, I was thinking about Argus trading the three two, but yeah, that makes sense too. You can, you know, you don't get punished by much besides maybe a, a cog hammer, which yeah. you're pretty sure isn't there. You probably would have seen it by now, but yeah, I mean the tap flame imp really just put him further behind though, so it was ambitious. Mm -hmm. uh, he does get to clear off one of these here. He can yeah. choose the 5-4 and then waste the taunt, or he can choose a 3-2 and get an extra taunt. I think I like this. I think I like removing the 5-4. It just makes it so you take less damage. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, he's pretty much hoping Kibler's just going to brick on some stuff here. He knows... He's been playing off the top pretty recently, but I mean, I think he's got plenty of gas to get through this game. Yeah, Kibble's Kip in a pretty good position here. Um, with board initiative and very, very high quality late game cards, um, the Warlock just doesn't have those... doesn't have, like, equal card-for-card -card answers. And when you're tapping, um, because you don't have that high quality one drop, you don't have that, like, really... Um, just high quality zoo deck. Tapping yeah. just feels kind of bad. Yeah, and I mean, there's really. You know, 25 is already really high in just a constructed game, but especially when your deck's only real burn is Doom Guards and Leper Gnomes, because you can't play any other burn. You, you know, you really. You don't have any cheese way out of the game. You know, Force and barely escaped against Savits with a second Doom Guard draw, but. Normally you can play stuff like Bane of Doom, Power Overwhelming. You just get more reach, and Forsen's mm -hmm. going to be lacking that. All right, well, Forsen pushes for uh, the most board he can possibly push for. Normally you would never see a play like this because you'd lose in a horrible way to Consecrate, but that card is not available to the players with Geico format. Yeah, um, I feel like Forsen, again, is just... You know, he's fighting for board and he's hoping, okay... If Kibler doesn't have anything great, maybe I can take over board and just coast that to a win, but Tyrion just challenges everything in the zoo deck. Yeah, there's no silence. It's hard to kill that card. It's harder to do anything, and when you kill it, you lose a bunch of creatures to the weapon. And with Kibler being at 25, it doesn't matter that there isn't much healing involved in this deck. Yeah, one of the cards I kind of looked at as kind of a cute alternative to removal and silence is you can still play Tink Master over Spark. Seen zero uh, of those though. We have not seen that quite yet. Mortal Coil here is a really nice draw though because otherwise the one one would contest the five one Lothab body that he leaves behind. Mm, there's another coil. That's also pretty good. 
Yep, it's gonna. He's basically setting himself up. He's giving Kibler, you know, a good trade, and then he gets to coil off the Azure or the Twilight Drake body. Well, that's a pretty good draw. Muster lets you finish off yeah. Lithub and lets you combo with Quartermaster, <laughs> which basically wins the game. If there was a better play than Tyrion this turn, it was Muster Quartermaster. Yep. And with no Hellfire, no Shadow Flame, no real option to clear this board available, especially with Kibler just going face. One of the yeah. things that Kibler's realized okay. it, <laughs> is in this format, you can just basically go face all the time. Mm -hmm. there, there's very few things that punish you. In fact, I don't even know what Forsen is looking for here. Yeah, I mean, he can stay That's alive nice. to the board. Uh, he has to Doomguard, but he has to Doomguard, and unless he kills off, he could tap. See, I really just don't understand why you would tap, though. Like, there's not much great stuff in your deck. Yeah, but I guess at that point you just throw the towel. So yeah. why play anything at all? Yeah. So, off the bat, both Paladin decks get very easy wins. And just like that, the strongest class is out of the way. Do you, uh, you feel Paladin much... is the strongest class? Now, definitively? I think so, yeah. After kind of seeing it play out, I think Shaman's also really strong, but I think Paladin might have the advantage in that matchup just because they take over board so well. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I've really liked Paladin so far. No, you're absolutely right. The The Paladin not only does a pretty good job of stabilizing, not only has the option to play mid-range, as Kibler has shown us, but um, it also does a better job than Shaman, even though it doesn't have a lot of its key cards uh, to battle aggro decks. Um, what does that say about Shaman and Constructed, then? Well, they have bad matchups, that's what it says. I mean, yeah. Muster for Battle is almost like a counter to Lightning Storm, as unintuitive as that sounds. Like, it's just, you don't want to storm the 1-1s, one but if you don't, you you're dead to Quartermaster. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's the situation where it's always been Shaman's, one of their, you know, worst matchups has been Paladin. Once you go into Constructed, you add stuff like Patron, and it's like, oh, jeez. You know, All right, it's... well, um, we have a Mech Shaman from Forsen up against uh, Kibler's added deck for this final round, which is going to be Warlock, which so far seems exactly like Life Coach's Warlock. Yeah, we saw Mind Control tech, we saw Jiraxis. It is a slow Warlock deck. Maybe maybe Kibler didn't quite see how crushed Life Coach got, but Life Coach should get crushed by Firebat, who had three extremely aggressive decks. Forson, pretty aggressive. Yeah, I mean, three, he does three pretty aggressive decks. He does have choice. the Mech Shaman. He does have uh, a Zoo, and he does have Hunter left. So I mean, I think this is a really important match for Forsen to win, if he just lets this Warlock get by, uh, then Kibler has the Priest deck, which has consistently been very good for him, and the Shaman deck, which also has been pretty good for him. So, I would say Kibler's weakest link is probably this Warlock deck. Mm -hmm. Alright, Forsen goes for the uh, Cogmaster play. Uh, it allows him to play the... Uh... Oh, that's a nice draw. Yeah, I think it's just going to protect his board, though. Yeah, because it still threatens 3 damage next turn. Uh, right now, it basically is a charge on the Power Mace, so you kind of want to represent 6 damage next turn and uh, still have a board left over. So, and, Oh, oh <laughs> Kibler's struggling is. here. This is basically exactly what we saw from the Life Coach game, which was having the Life Tap on turn 2 and 3 being just completely locking you out of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the taunts are going to come down. He has heal bot. He has a lot of taunts, but stuff like Rockbiter is going to help him push through that without losing his board. And I have to think that eventually, with no board clears available, because you were talking about earlier, I mean, usually these taunts and heals are supplemented by board clears. You need yeah. a way to come back on board, because if you just keep playing taunts, you give your opponent the option of how they want to trade, they leave behind stuff and eventually the taunts fall behind in that battle. Mm -hmm. Now what do you think about um, the Harvest Golem versus the Spider Tank? It seems like the Spider Tank would have fared better against just about everything. Uh, it also yeah. threatens more damage. 
Um, yeah, it's more resistant to getting hit with like five damage, I guess. But with Kibler playing yeah. nothing so far, with Kibler playing mid range, you have to kind of consider the fact that you want to kill the Sengen the following turn. I really don't think Forsen thought too much about the fact that Sengen and Belcher are very likely in his opponent's range, and five damage is very relevant against both of those. Mm -hmm. I think he just kind of figured. Okay, I'm fighting for board. When you fight for board, death rattle minions are really nice. I'll just buff this up. What could go wrong? And mm -hmm. he's been one off of, you know, that magic number two times in a row now. All right. Well, he's still doing uh, fantastically here. Uh, yeah. Kibler with most of the tools you'd expect in a slow Warlock deck, except for those board clears, which uh, are pretty relevant. Um, seems like Kibble is just going to try to hang on this game as much as he can, but is it really enough? Yeah, I mean, he's played three of his taunts. He has Defender of Argus left. He has a, a heal bot, but is that is that really going to be enough? Like, maybe not. Uh, he can, Forsen can get through most of this board. He does have to leave behind uh, something. He has to leave behind the Sinjin at least. So... But again, it's kind of like, eventually the Warlock has to clear the Shaman's board, somehow, mm -hmm. to, to win the game, or else you eventually will die. What and a difference it would have no been game. if you had the Spider Tank, though. Yeah, I mean, the, the Spider Tank would have just sealed the game for sure. Do you feel there's really any chance from Kibler still, though? I feel like it's just it's just too slow to get on the board, too slow to set up a win condition. Really, the, the game that you're playing is probably to trade throughout the game and hope the Shaman runs out of cards completely. And I don't know if that's really a, a winning strategy uh, at this point. I think you're just too slightly behind on board. Like, you can clear off, uh, if you went abusive Doomguard, you can clear off the big threats, but then you're still taking eight on the backswing. Your opponent develops more minions. You're just taking too much incremental damage that, again, if you can't clear the entire board, you will die. <laughs> That's just kind of how it goes. And so right, well, I would like think... He's making that play. Yeah, I think even if he runs Forsen out of cards, the fact that Forsen has minions just alive is enough. And Forsen also has a, a lot of direct damage spells in his deck. Uh, we've seen quite a few of these uh, these Shaman decks, and really the difference between the success and the failures has been um, that little bit amount of uh, spell damage to seal out the games. I think it was really intelligent by Kibler, though, not to kill the Fel Reaver, to leave it up. Uh, you take the same amount of damage, you challenge what's left with the 3-1 Taunt, and you get to mill out... Forsen is at four cards, which means you get to mill out exactly his deck with his draw. So mm. unfortunately, if if Kibler doesn't get two cards to play, uh, then Forsen won't run out of cards. But he can basically run him out of cards. Like I said, though, the problem is he just has too much stuff. Like yeah, even I mean, if he mills this. him out, he can't win. He's just oh, dead to board. God. Well, I mean, Kibler needs a Shadow Flame, and he can't have that in his deck. Oh! oh! MC Tech. I think you MC Tech before tapping. Yeah, you just you trade a bit first. You have to MC the Tech options. the 8-5. I think you just yeah. you literally have to get the 8-5. Uh, yeah, that seemed, it's a 1-4 it's a to, to win the game, maybe? Maybe. No. And what can you tap into now? Well, you have to tap into something. Nope. Oh, do you know what would have been sick if he then tapped into another MC tech? <laughs> yeah, but then he couldn't use it. He could have if he didn't attack first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe there's a little merit to not attacking first. Just tap first, see what you get. Depends what was there. But, uh, uh, so, not tapping first is better if you take the Fell Reaver, because then you're not dead to the spare part that gives attack. Mm -hmm. which he got two of, uh, so. Well, yeah. pretty rough stuff for Kibler. Um, it does seem like uh, perhaps this line of adding on another slow deck, especially being one that has kind of failed so far in the tournament, may not have been the best idea, but we will see in this best of seven. Uh, being down uh, two to one isn't the worst of situations. Yeah, he's going to get off that deck ASAP, though. <laughs> he's just like... Yeah. 
I'll, I'll take my priest win now, thanks. Yeah, uh, looks like uh, Forsen is going to try again with the Warlock. So far, uh, the Warlocks have been very unsuccessful throughout the tournament. Um, we've had less of a sample size from the slower Warlock decks, but uh, seeing the games play out, it seems like they may actually be worse than the aggressive ones. Yeah, what do you think about uh, Forsen didn't play abusive on turn one? Mm, with Mortal Coil as well. Yeah, yeah. it seems a bit weird. Kibble actually kept Azure Drake off the mulligan just because he values the uh, extra oh. health. Yeah. That, that's right. pretty intelligent. Well, here comes probably a black one. Tick. Oh, the, the, the Dark Cultist. Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't so, quite see his hand there. So, yeah, I mean, I think Forsen's going to be really ahead on board. And. Wow. Velen's Chosen's going to have to carry pretty hard. Yeah, but it, it doesn't. Um, even if you Velen's chosen, his creature still dies to the board while Forsen can continue developing his. Yep. I mean, the main issue, though, is unlike last match, this priest deck isn't really filled with taunts. It's just, you know, general value minions. What do you think about just playing the North Shard and healing rather than Velen's chosen? That seems like it may have been better. Yeah, the 1-3 the body does contest those quite well anyway. And you kind of require your Ooh. opponent to kill both. Which that is, was a really good draw for Force. <laughs> yeah, the one drop. Yeah, now Shadow Word Death is legal in this format, so I was thinking maybe you could just jam down that Doomguard next turn. You you can still do that, and I think you should. Yeah, but that's good. Yeah, unless you top deck. Oh, it. yeah. Yeah, you top deck the right card to Doomguard away. Oh no. He's going for the Magma Rager. He well, needs if he to gets, get this juggle. I guess the juggle is pretty good. Oh, I no, missed. Does not, so now he has to trade. Why didn't he just Doomguard? <laughs> he would have won so hard. Well, the Magma Rager uh, is still pretty effective in this situation. <laughs> yeah, Somehow. who knew? Who knew? It's kind of in Kibler's thing, is uh, his opponents having Magma Ragers and not getting punished. They're just actually good against Kibler. <laughs> Alright, well, half uh, here comes Sylvanas. It's happening against all him. three of his opponents. All three. For Forsen doesn't even want to trade. <laughs> <laughs> I think he go face with that Magma Rager. Because <laughs> you're no longer vulnerable to death. Yeah, you just go face. Your opponent's going to trade into that Mang Ranger for you. <laughs> <laughs> what cruel punishment we've resorted to. He actually would. That's the best part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is so sweet to watch. He's going to trade into it, too. So, I mean, you know, we laugh, but good play by Forsen. Going face with that Magma Rager. And Forsen can basically drop his entire hand. Oh, jeebs, though. You don't need that. I think it's time to go face and drop yeah, your hand. Yeah, it's, it's time to go face. Jeebs, he's dead, Crip. Yeah. Your opponent is dead. There's not a single combination of cards that are legal in this format that bring him back. Right. Who needs cards when your opponent's dead? <laughs> Those facial expressions from Kibler. Oh, uh, you don't trade. Come on. You thought about this last turn. The face is the place. Face is the place. Force and agrees. Or does he? Okay, so your opponent draws mind control tech. They take the Doom Guard. <laughs> oh, come what? On. Oh, what? Oh, All right. come on. Well, I believe there's still he's, no card that still works. Best. Yeah. <laughs> I still... Would have been cool to get face. Yeah, you can you can draw two cards from these Northshires. And I'm sure both of them would be just as meaningless. Yep. Can't draw a Holy Nova, that's for sure. Is someone injured? Yeah. Holy Nova would have been alright. You would have yeah. uh, been at seven. With some kind of board, kind of. But no, that doesn't do it. Yeah, Kibber so... Concedes. Forsen's uh, up three. Forsen uh, is on match point here. Uh, again, guys, for the final, we are doing uh, best of seven. Um, Forsen's added deck was the Paladin, which took a quick victory in the opening game. 
And now he's on Hunter, and he's got to beat up three mid-range decks. That can't be too hard of a task. It's really not that hard. I mean, I think of his Hunter deck, we didn't see much of it. We saw a lot of one-drops. Um, I think if it's well-built, it's it's almost guaranteed to take a win off one of these three. Kibler's going to go with the strongest option first, try to get a win on the board with Priest. Uh, we've seen his Priest do really well against Hunter. It's 2-0 and against Hunter in his past yep. two matches. But that is a pretty powerful hunter hand. Yep. Double Lepernome, double juggler. That's two uh -huh. pair. But Kibler showing his prowess and drawing turn one, two, threes. Yeah. What can you do here? Pass? You have to, no, you have to coin out the juggler. You have to get oh, rid of it. Man. Yeah. That sucks. It'd be okay if your opponent didn't have a shadow boxer to follow it up. The shadow boxer makes you just want to quit. Yeah. So, like, if well, the priest passed, you're fine. This is what uh, Kibler designed the deck to be. I mean, he uh, he wanted, like, early game, mid game threats that would just challenge these low creatures very well. Uh, the problem with that, uh, while I think when it happens, he does take wins, I feel like there's a huge consistency gap between the decks that run a lot of one drops and this type of priest deck. So, um,. Even though it does counter, I feel like probably one out of three games, just the opposite happens, and you don't draw the required cards. Yep. Well, that deckhand really wants to be played. Yeah, okay, there we go. Whoa. I think that was a bit of a problem on our end. It's pretty fine now. Looks like a turn passed, and Forsen has developed a lot of dudes. Yeah. And this is one of the problems for the Priest deck. When you don't have a large quantity of attacking minions, two ones can just overwhelm you. Yeah, I mean, he's pushing six damage this turn. He'll probably push at least another one of, uh, another round of six damage next turn. Four damage on Leper Gnomes die. You're threatening the Fell Reaver next turn. It is going to get death, but... Uh... Well, I think that's good for him, that it baits yeah. out this death. Uh, all that really does is remove two more damage. Forsen's mm -hmm. even emoting. I mean, this clears a path for your Fell Reaver. And the Fell Reaver, from what we can see, unless there's another death top deck, will connect. And suddenly, after having a pretty good start, I mean, a one drop into a two drop, he blanked one turn. Yeah, that that's might, exactly That might it. be enough, yeah. One turn. Drop. And he does have quite a few three drops. I mean, we saw, we've seen Dark Cultist, we've seen Velen's Chosen. I guess that really wouldn't have done anything since he didn't have board. But uh, maybe Dark Cultist is the only three drop. And yeah, I mean, now I, I look at this and it's like Forsen's pushing a lot of damage. And again, comeback mechanics pretty much non-existent. Well, if death happens, it's still recoverable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel. Yeah. It just has to be like a 1 in 20 here to top deck death. That's not death. That is that... death, but it's for Kibler. Right, right. So, you kill the Worgen, because that's the best you can do. You... You Maybe gotta play... play the Akanai and ping it? Or... No, you gotta play more stuff than that. Yeah, I don't think you can play Akanai. I think you have to play Dark Cultist, Twilight, Whelp, and heal yourself. And then you're at, what, you're at 12, 8, 6, and from the hand, the abusive, you, you go down to 4. So, Killer's going to go with that exact play, probably. I, you got to heal yourself, of course, so. Mm -hmm. well, you're living on the prayer. Kill command, bow. Oh, goodness, there was that. Force is like, that, oh, at least, no. oh, there we go, the wolf yeah, rider. Yeah, that's, is that it? He's one off, right? Yeah. But with the, with the Leopardomes out. Yeah. And no no healing in Kibler's deck. That's that's it. Are we Kibler... sure there's no healing in Kibler's deck? What if there's like a holy fire? Uh that is legal. So but but would he have enough to clear the board anyway? He would, right? Yeah, he would. He could actually live with a holy fire top deck. And like by live I mean just survive another turn. Because he'd have to leave both leopardomes up. Well, that's not it, and uh, yeah. Forsen is our champion. Champion Sin takes another tournament win to add to his resume. We're gonna have to update the copy pastas. <laughs> uh.
<laughs> yeah, very good stuff from Forsen. Um, I feel like his uh, strategy throughout the tournament was pretty good. It's just, uh, you know, it seems like aggressive decks are going to work. Build three aggressive decks, sees what he misses in the final uh, very, very well. Um, I feel like, uh, I think Kibler had a really good chance just when the players had three decks apiece. But uh, with the addition of each of the decks, the improvements that Forsen made to his lineup versus the improvements that... Uh, or liabilities that Kibler added to his lineup, uh, I guess could be argued, uh, really weighed it in Forsen's favor. So uh, certainly well deserved, well played, and congratulations to Forsen boys. Yeah, I mean, I think Forsen had the his strategy was similar to some other players, but I think his decks were actually a little more refined. Uh, the Hunter deck wasn't you know met crazy. He just threw in Fell Reaver, which again I think was a really smart choice put in as many one-drops as he could fit, and just went face. And, I mean, that's what won him this tournament. So, yeah, re really smart strategy. And uh, speaking of tournaments, Geico and One Nation of Gamers, who sponsor this tournament, they are running an entire summer circuit of open tournaments, which you guys at home can play in. So if you head over to liquidheart.com, you can sign up for those. They happen every week. Uh, the next feature tournament is next this Friday, actually, at 6 p.m. Eastern. So be sure to check that out as well. Uh, huge thanks to Geico and One Nation Gamers for putting on these tournaments. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you guys had some fun. Uh, I know that we started up a bit late today, but uh, you know, it's uh, these days a lot of tournaments happening, and I'm glad to be part of this. I'm glad to be part of the exciting, the the fun rules tournaments. And uh, I think overall the result was uh, was very good. Um, yeah, I think. Horse and boys. Horse and boys. Forsen boys indeed. Congratulations to him. Forsen takes home 2000 bucks, and hopefully you guys took out uh, a good viewing experience. Again, check out the future tournaments that will be, uh, that will be hosted. And, uh, oh, we're not quite done yet. Uh, looks like we are going to get Forsen for another interview. Forsen really likes the, likes the, what is the limelight? Is that what they call it? Yeah, sure. He's a, he's yeah. a popular guy, you know? Yeah, it keeps, keeps coming in for these interviews. Well, uh, it should be interesting to hear how he prepared for the uh, final match because I think above anything else in this tournament, he did that in the absolute best way possible. So um, we'll, we'll take a short break while we get him set up, while we get set up, and uh, we'll see what he has to say then. Hello, everyone. Uh, we have Forsen, the champion of the Geico Brawl here with us. Uh, you keep you keep coming back, man. Like uh, every time you win, you're here, and you you've been yeah. you've been the star of the interview session uh, among uh, among your recent titles. How do you feel, man? I feel good, man. <clears throat> a bit tired. Had a long stream session before this. Okay, okay. Well, uh, you certainly did very well. Um, we we both thought that um, the adjustments that you made going into the final were about as best as you could have made them. Uh, mm. So we're very happy to see that. Uh, we did consider a very well-deserved, very try-hard win. Did you, uh, did you uh, spend all of, uh, all of the time between today and yesterday to come up with this uh, final edition, or how, how did this take place? Um, no, I basically I just made my deck yesterday after I saw that Brian Kibler was in the semifinals because I thought that his decks were going to beat probably uh, the other two competitors competitors uh, that were remaining, so I just uh, prepared a deck that was a uh, good control deck, con mid-range control paladin, that was better against this version of okay. yeah. well, it, well, it was. I mean, uh, his, his addition was the control warlock, which seemed a lot like the life coach deck, uh, which didn't win games. Were you surprised to see that? Uh, no, I mean, I was pretty sure he was going to play uh, the same style, and uh, considering you already had Shaman and Paladin, uh, Warlock was probably one of the better classes to do that with, playing mid-range status. Because they have some good defensive early minions as well, and that seemed to be his team. Um, you know, with the, the the Dragon Priest thingies, the one-drops, and then like Zombie yep. Chows in every deck, and then uh, Voidwalkers are really good against aggro, so I was like guessing he, would get, he was going to play something like that. All right. Well, he did. Um, it didn't really work out for him too well. Uh, I mean, you, you're obviously here, so uh, yeah, pretty good stuff. I don't yep. know. 
you've been here a lot. We, we've asked you what you think about the tournament and stuff. But you have anything to mention now that you've won it? Uh, no, not really. I just want to thank all my force and boys for staying up, watching. I guess. Thanks for the support. So with uh, with you winning tournaments recently and Force and Boys being 2-0 in the Archon League, like is this just are, are the Force and Boys taking over finally? I know I don't know, man. Maybe we have to take a step back. This is way too try hard for too me. Too try actually. hard, yeah. Yeah. Can I so, go to your website to learn how to get Legend? I I don't have a website yet, but you know what? Maybe maybe I'll make one. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Uh, all right. Well, uh, thanks for coming <clears throat> on. Congratulations again. Uh, certainly you, well deserved. Uh, another one to uh, add to the Force and Boys resume, and uh, hopefully that list continues. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed Geico Brawl number one. It's been a lot of fun uh, to cast the Achaki, and uh, it's been great to watch you play Force. And so, all thanks. good stuff. Thanks for yep. watching, guys. We'll see you next time.